Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill. Now last week's video I was looking at using the signal generator with digital circuits and I was pondering digital circuits and I thought to myself it's about time I took a little logic problem and um, tried to sort it out uh, using some uh, logic and some gates. So that's what uh, this video is about today and I thought I'd take a, a real world problem and see if I could make some sense of it. Now I'm certainly not a mathematician by any stretch of the imagination. I left school with very very poor maths and if it were not for that rather good organisation, the Open University, I'd probably uh, still have very very poor maths indeed. It's not wonderful now but it's certainly a great deal better than it was so thanks to them. Uh, but one of the things I'm not familiar with is Boolean algebra and I'm just aware that what the problem I'm going to try and solve today there's probably much better solutions. So if you're an expert in that maybe this isn't the video for you, this is real beginner stuff. But I've taken what I think's um, a real world problem and I've tried to apply some logic to it and that's what this video is all about. So let's start by looking at the problem. The problem I'm trying to solve then is in one sense quite simple. I need to start my motorbike and uh, most of you probably don't realise that um, uh, don't always drive a car, sometimes like to ride on two wheels, it's much more fun. So this is my old but rather nice motorcycle. And if you're a motorcyclist the next bit's going to um, make complete sense. If you're not familiar uh, this hopefully will allow you to understand the problem I'm trying to solve. So to start a motorcycle we have to have uh, several conditions to be met and the first one is usually that the gears need to be in neutral, the gear lever on my bike's there on the lower left to the right and that's usually indicated by a green light on the dashboard and that tells us that uh, we're in neutral. So if you're not a motorcyclist you probably find the idea of not knowing what gear you're in perhaps a little odd and on a lot of motorcycles that is the case you don't actually know what gear you're in the only indication you get is a green light that tells you uh, if you're in neutral. So providing you're in neutral and providing the side stand is in the up position that usually allows you to um, start the bike. Uh, there are uh, things like a kill switch etc but we're not going to that now. Uh, but there is a, a little added twist to this story and I've quite often seen this starting a vehicle problem in electronics books usually applied to a car but on a bike there is a condition where you can uh, start the bike if the um, engine is in gear as long as the side stands up and that is if you pull the clutch in certainly that's the case on my bike and that would allow you for instance to uh, if you stole the bike would allow you to quickly restart it um, and uh, pull away smartly without having to go into neutral and uh, uh, set your feet again like that so that's the problem um, I'd like those conditions to be met um, and I'm not an expert in boolean algebra or in logic circuit design so I'm sure there's going to be much better ideas than this um, however this is my uh, real beginners solution so what I've got essentially are um, three gates I'll explain why I've got three and not two in a minute uh, feeding a MOSFET and that hopefully is going to simulate um, the circuits you might come across on the motorcycle so what we've got is <coughs> on the left gearbox neutral indication again if that switch is made uh, then uh, the gearbox is in neutral um, clutch lever switch if you pull the clutch in it engages the switch and thirdly the side stand the switch will be engaged if the side stand is up so I've just gone for what I'm going to call positive affirmation here um, the conditions that you want to be true are all true and indicated by a, a logic level high and I've got uh, the pull down resistors there to set everything in a low state otherwise. Um, across on the right I've got a, a starter button on the lower side of that uh, MOSFET and to simulate the starter mode to solve the mode I've got a white LED and that LED will light provided the starter button is pressed and the input to the MOSFET is also um, uh, enabled it to be, to be switched on. So, uh, how does my solution work? Well, um, first of all, I start with an OR gate, and uh, the inputs to that OR gate are the gearbox neutral indication and the clutch lever. So, if the gearbox um, is 
not in neutral and the clutch lever is not pulled in the output both inputs are low so the output will be low however if the gearbox is in neutral um, and whether the clutch lever is pulled in or not the output will be high and that's the case um, wouldn't matter whether you've got the clutch pulled in or not um, the output's always going to be high uh, that then feeds into the next gate which is a NAND gate and the truth table for a NAND gate looks like that so if side stand is uh, up therefore the switch is closed and we're getting a uh, high output from the OR gate then uh, the output will be uh, low so we've got 1 plus 1 equals naught there at the bottom and that's the only condition that that will occur uh, and then that feeds into the next gate which is another NAND gate but I've got the inputs connected together which makes it a NOT gate and that simply inverts the input uh, from the NAND and so that will mean when the output's low then the output of the NOT gate will be high uh, and thus that provides uh, a voltage to the um, gate of the MOSFET and if we were to press the starter button then uh, the LED will light uh, which simulates the starter motor starting. So the question is if I've got a NAND and a NOT well NAND plus NOT equals AND so why on earth don't I use an AND gate? Um, good point um, and actually really simple answer to that I haven't got any <laughs> So, I've just used two NANDs. The great thing about NAND gates is that you can configure them for, for pretty much anything. So we've got uh, NAND plus NOT uh, equals AND, and that gives me the, the same answer. So, uh, before we go and see if this will actually work, let's uh, just have a quick look uh, how that appears on the breadboard. And I'm not going to go into all the details of pull-down resistors and current limiting for the LED, but just to say on the left there, uh, I thought it fitting to have a, a green LED uh, which indicates the bike's in neutral uh, and then the two inputs there, the two green jumpers on the left um, well we've got feeding the two inputs of the OR gate the output of the OR gate is that uh, red jumper that runs across sort of centre screen feeds one side of the first NAND gate and then we've got the white uh, jumper cable which uh, simulates the side stand switch and I've got it tied high there and then the output of the uh, NAND gate on pin 3 is applied to the next gate uh, using those two little um, single line jumpers and the output of that second NAND gate is the purple jumper that goes to the gate of the little MOSFET that you can see there obviously on a a, a real motorcycle you'd want a, a slightly more meaty MOSFET than that one and then I've just got a white LED there with a current limiting resistor just to uh, uh, simulate uh, whether or not the um, starter motor solenoid would actually engage and the push button is the to simulate the starter button so let's hop across to the breadboard and uh, see if it'll work Okay, hopefully this looks um, a little bit familiar to you. Um, that's the arrangement on the breadboard. So we've got the power supply coming in here, top left, and these two green jumpers are simulating the, uh, the gear um, in neutral indicator. If I disconnect that, the green gear neutral light goes out, so we'd be in gear. Uh, connecting it up uh, takes one of the inputs of the OR gate high, otherwise it's pulled down here. And then this green jump here is the clutch lever, so whether that's in or out shouldn't matter. Um, whether it's whether it's low, as pulled down or high there. So for a moment I'm going to not do anything with the clutch lever. So bike's in neutral, clutch lever is uh, just uh, left, so it, the clutch is engaged. And here we've got the um, this jumper simulating the side stand switch, pulled low there. But if I take it high, that should mean that when we press the starter button, we do indeed get uh, an indication on the white LED there of uh, engine start. So that's okay. Now, while I'm holding the starter button down, which obviously I wouldn't do in real life for very long, if we take off the side stand switch, that immediately goes out. Um, and, but as you can see, whether or not the clutch is engaged or not, as long as the bike is in neutral, we do get a okay to start indication. And let's say it was in gear, um, so it's in gear, so a starter switch um, is disabled effectively. But if I now pull the clutch lever in, 
like so that should allow the engine to start as indeed it does so it um, doesn't matter whether we pull the clutch in and the gear is in neutral doesn't matter um, we're still going to get a high output off the OR gate uh, which gives us a, an OK to start indication but doing all that makes no difference to the side stand if the side stand is down then the bike won't start so there we go that's um, the arrangement uh, and as I said earlier uh, I am an expert on logic circuits and so uh, I actually quite enjoyed trying to solve this uh, uh, relatively simple but uh, I thought quite interesting problem so there we go now I used this NAND gate that's actually four NAND gates on that chip I used that uh, chip to simulate an AND gate which is what I needed because I don't have an AND gate and I did um, mentioned earlier that the NAND gates are of course universal gates so a little opportunity here to um, see if we can simulate an OR gate with an AND gate so here's a little graphic that shows you the arrangement so we use three NAND gates arranged like so and that so the two inputs on the left are the two inputs two inputs to the OR gate if you like and the input on out sorry the output of the right hand NAND gate would be the output of an OR gate. So those three NAND gates have um, simulated an OR gate. Um, that's the theory. Um, why don't we see if that happens in reality? Um, so by the magic of filmmaking, if I might quote um, Christopher Barnett from Explaining Computers and his excellent channel, definitely worth a look and definitely worth a subscribe, um, might I suggest by the magic of filmmaking that we add a second breadboard. Okay, so as if by magic, um, I've added just a second breadboard here and I've got uh, another 74LS00 uh, and I've got it arranged here as uh, an OR gate, as I um, talked about just now. Um, so the two gates on this lower side of the chip are the two input gates and then these two orange and grey jumpers take the inputs of those around to the third gate there. So I've simply got the output of that third gate feeding into the NAND gate and I've used a, a red jumper um, earlier on up here I'd got that red jumper across there to so keep the colour convention I've got that um, effectively output of the OR gate going into the um, second uh, NAND gate here uh, I've got a jumper here which is the um, bike neutral uh, in, uh, indication here which currently it is in neutral from the green LED and this is the uh, clutch um, switch it's currently being pulled low um, because the clutch lever is uh, not touched at the moment so the clutch is engaged so with the bike in neutral with the side stand up it should start and as you can see indeed it does so no change to the um, side stand indication if the side stand is down then we won't start um, but we'll assume we've not made that mistake and so across here um, if the bike isn't in neutral uh, again we won't start but if we wanted to pull the clutch lever in we do indeed get a start indication so you can see there that's the um, 74LS00 which is a four NAND gates uh, set up using three of the gates as an OR gate and uh, you can see that um, that works just fine so that's uh, a nice little bonus example of uh, the universal NAND gate okay well there you have it um, managed to solve the problem whether it's the best way to do it or not i don't know but as a bonus we've also been able to see nand gates used to replicate an and and also an or gate um, so hopefully that's made some sense and one of the things that's been really valuable for me in making this video is it's forced me to really think about how i use gates and i certainly sat with a, a sheet of paper and puzzled over this problem for for an hour or two before i actually got down to building a circuit and incredibly when i did build it it worked um, which is always always nice so hope you've um, found it useful get them logic gates out and get trying things out some really really good way to learn 
Um, thanks for watching and as I always say now at the end of these videos if you're in the market for a multimeter as a hobbyist then check out the link in the description to the Kiwitz meters if you use the code um, that gets you a discount and it also helps the channel I'd appreciate that I make good use of these Kiwitz meters and find them perfectly adequate thanks for watching look forward to seeing you on the next video